figured out what the terrible sound was. After enduring heavy wind for several hours, we suffered damage to our rigging. These poles are called the seagull striker, and they provide a downward counter pressure on the crossbeam to support our rigging. Without them, our rig is completely unstable. We might be done here, guys. I'm not quite sure how that would have happened. There wouldn't have been any load on it. I carefully pull everything out of the water and secure it the best I can. We need a rigger. Okay. And then we try our best to secure the mast. We don't know if there's been right. any other damage. We've got a line running here. We've got a line running here. Hopefully that'll help to offset any weird pressure that might be happening here. If any chance we lose this front one, I'm hoping that we don't lose the rig. If we lose, because we're only, you know, three points because it's a catamaran. So, that's it. That's all I can do until we can get a hold of somebody who can help us. Let's change our story. Let's change our life. We'll do it our way, our own design. All right, guys. Very, very different <laughs> circumstances here today. Weather is calm. Tide is turning. We have to get ourselves under this bridge back here. And there is no tide board. And we have a compromised rig. This line here, cleated. Wow, it vibrates. That's crazy. Can you see that? Anyway, we've got it cleated all the way up to the top of the mast. Another one over there, cleated to the top of the mast to try to take some of the pressure off of the forestay here because the seagull striker, as they call it, sometimes they call it a pelican striker, is completely dismasted here. <laughs> it's sheared off. This foot and this foot here, these attach here and here and you can see it broke right at the point where the stainless hardware went through so we had stainless inside of aluminum and it's probably original i doubt that these have ever been replaced and i i think it just corroded and weakened the aluminum to the point where this was the weakest spot of this part of the rig there's more to the story but look here look here at the back side of the hardware it doesn't look bad at all it looks excellent so this is a great example of why you can't just trust the surface level of things um, i spoke to my friend ridge who is a uh, previous owner two owners ago he owned and lived on this boat for almost 10 years and he said it's a good idea he's now a, a boat builder so he he's learned <laughs> i think he's probably an expert on the topic. He said it's a good idea to back those out, inspect them for signs of corrosion, and then Tef lube them or some other appropriate um, grease type lubrication um, probably once a year. I would have never considered doing that. So anyway, here's what we think happened after speaking with a few other uh, Vinzia 42 owners. The anchor is on attached to this bridle right here that's kind of wobbling. The bridle's going straight down. Anchor is this way. Usually the wind or current is pushing you backwards on your anchor and your anchor is in front of you. Well, we were in a really freak situation with extremely forceful winds that were pushing us forward on the anchor. So the anchor bridle here was actually was actually aft. It was this way. And you can't see them very well now. But down below here, you can see that line right there. That line ran up to our bowsprit, which is a pole that sticks out right here. So all of that pressure backwards on that bowsprit line was causing the bowsprit, which is a pole that sticks out, to flex downwards, which is what we think happened here. It caused so much flexion that this was being pushed outwards like this and it caused these to just shear right off. It's interesting to me that 
the lines, which are dyneema, here, the, the bowsprit line right here, didn't break. This is the seagull striker. It's stainless. It didn't break. Instead, the weakest spot were these things. And I almost wonder if that's by design, because you can see clearly here that these are designed, they're just, it's like an insert. This is an aluminum tube. This foot is an insert that goes in there so far and it's bolted on and it's bolted on over here. We got three boards? Okay, it's time to go. We're watching the tide here. We got to get under this bridge. This is going to be tricky because we can't put extra load on that cross beam up there. Here, hold on. So Becky and I are going to have to be on our A game to get this anchor up without putting stress to this beam going across. Just waiting for Corey to give me instructions. Right now he's working on getting the slack out of the chain. So there's no pressure on the boat at the moment. Um, but he's taking the slack up to get the bridle off. And then once the bridle's off, it's on me to get this boat anchor up. And him a little bit. This part is not. This guy here, this thing here, it's a 5 sixteenths hook thing. I don't know what you call it. It's from Mantis Anchors. I see a brand here. Guys, man, Mantis Anchors. This thing took a lot of force and it held, it held hard. And for that matter, we have a Mantis Anchor also. I think it's a 65 pound. I'm just gonna go out of limb. I'm gonna say Mantis Anchors will hold. Your rig will break before the Mantis Anchor is gonna give out. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but the Mantis Anchor, freaking strong stuff. You ready? I, I think we're straight down at the moment. Let me see which way it's going to go. We wrote to Mantis Marine and shared our story. They were very happy that their anchor kept us safe, and they invited us to be a brand ambassador. If you've been considering upgrading your anchor and ground tackle, I highly recommend Mantis Marine. And if you use the code SALTYESCAPE, we will receive a small referral commission, and it'll go a long ways to helping our channel grow. So we don't have fancy headsets. So Corey's just yelling directions and pointing is how we normally we do pointing. The problem is we've got current carrying us. So it's like it's like, you know, we're just current and wind is pushing us as we go. I'm going forward, baby. Okay, go reverse. Hard reverse. Hard reverse. Real hard. Real hard. Extra hard. So there's like two, three, four knots of current here. We also have about. can't get it. It's jammed up. It's straight down still. I lost a lot of chain. Our Mantis anchor had dug in so hard because of the almost 50 knot winds that we endured, we were having a difficult time retrieving it. We finally decided to hook the bridle back on and try to use the engines to motor over top of it. Alright, come off your throttle. I think we're going to have to bridle it.
you want to drive forward on it? I want to go. I want to go forward on it, and then I want you to turn and point that way. What's happening? So the anchor is stuck, and we tried to drive forward over it. deal with mud a, a different time. <laughs> right now we have bigger fish to fry. We gotta get out of here and under this bridge before the tide becomes a bigger problem for us. Oh boy, guys, oh boy. All right, all right, got it done. Good job. The anchor was crazy. We got it up. Good job, Corey. Uh, pretty good deck? directions. I'm fighting like a three knot current right now, so it kept wanting to push us this way. So even when Corey is saying reverse, I'm not doing much reversing because I can see us moving back. I'm just trying to direct us a little bit as There's we go. There's a couple of springs on our rig there, but. I mean, we've done all we can. This point, but um, yeah, Mantis, you should make your slogan our anchors hold, even if the rest of your boat won't. <laughs> and, and I don't blame Mantis Anchors, I'm happy they held. I would hate to drag. I mean, that, that I, would have been worse. I'm very pleased with our anchor. Uh, we have been through some really high winds on this trip and not very many protected anchorages. And unfortunately, this wind event was not expected. Um, we didn't really have anything. It was, a, a, I think, just a freak thunderstorm that brought high winds with it uh, because nothing was saying that it was going to get like that. Like I said, it was well over 50 miles an hour, if you're looking at that, like 44, 48 knots, I think we had at one point. And then it was hard to tell because it started raining really hard, which slows down the, the wind um, anometer, wind instrument. So anyway. Yeah, we think we had 50. Plus. I think we have 50 plus knot gusts because the wind actually seemed worse at that point, but the actual thing was reading like 30 something knots. But we were like just the whole boat was shaking, it was wild. So, yeah, this is a thing. This happens, this is sailing. So, here we go. We got to go get this fixed now, and we got to get under this bridge. So, I'll have Corey go get binoculars and look at the boards uh, again. As we approach, we should be good because that took a little bit longer than what I expected it to take because the anchor was so stuck. But we're actually leaving on the time that I intended to pull out. Uh, but what I've been doing is I can see the bridge boards and there's no height markers on this bridge, but everything we read said you need three boards out of the water. And the third board was basically out of the water when we started hauling anchor. That took us about 10 minutes. So I think we are gonna have plenty of water, but I'm gonna have Corey get the binoculars and check it out. So just to make this point extra clear, we're about to go under a bridge where we have a significant risk of the antenna at least tapping the bridge girders and we have a compromised rig that we've done our best to support with halyards and other things. And we can't really wait for lower tide because we really have to get into this next marina. Just past this bridge is very shallow water. <laughs> On the other side of the sound, it gets very shallow, so we can't go through at absolute low tide. It's not going to be, well, supposedly not, not a good idea, especially because we have the negative tide today. So we've had a negative tide every day, though. So Do you need to be more centered? Am I not? You're, I can't. You're, I'm getting pushed. You're to starboard. Okay. It looks tall, doesn't it? It looks tall enough. Yeah, I'm going to have to pick it up. It's getting swirly. I'm sorry. I'm going to do the best I can to keep it as slow as possible. I cannot slow further than this. I do not want to put it in reverse right now. This is the scariest part. The next bridge would Maybe you should point somewhat port because it looks like the current is going to starboard. I may have to pick up the engines here with it. Oh, fourth board's out of the water. I can see the fourth on All that right. side. I'm going out front. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to pick up the We are going fast. I know. Thank you. 
We're not hitting. Go, go, go. Throttle it up. All right, we're clear. Good job, baby. Good job. All right. That just... That felt like we were going sideways. We Didn't were going us? sideways. I'm, I'm getting throttled up because we got to get to this next place. We're kind of swirling around here a bit. I know. Is that what you want? I can't help it. It's the current carrying. You can throttle it up. All right, I got to go have diarrhea now. <laughs> uh, I don't like when they don't have a height board and people are reporting that it's too short at certain times. And no one ever puts in the actual tide number when you go under so it's like if, it, if it's a plus six and you got 65 feet okay I can look at things and know that but people will just be like two hours after high tide well what was the high tide that day yeah because the tides are different we've had a nine foot tide and today I think it was seven and a half eight no eight and a half so it's really nice active captain is really really nice where people will feed in and give real information but we're noobs. We are total beginners. And when we are finding like questionable information that's being posted, it's kind of frustrating because we expect the people that are posting this information probably have more experience than we have because we have a week and a half. That's how much experience we have. <laughs> that's not okay, it feels like that's it. We've had, our, we've had a good initiation though. We've had a lot of things happen, so. So yes, yeah, so I got to get across this sound we picked today because it's going to be very calm, supposed to be, fingers crossed. Um, tomorrow we are getting a horrible weather system, supposedly. So we're trying to get to this marina to tie up because we don't want to risk putting more stress on our rig, riding out another known, ridiculous 30, 40 knot wind event. So that's all day tomorrow, and then Thursday we have to keep an eye. Guys, we made it. We are in Jekyll Island Marina. Jekyll Harbor, Jekyll Harbor Marina. Sorry. Look, our lines are real loose. We had to tuck in here because I think we've mentioned it already, but there is a wicked storm and you can already hear it howling. I have a feeling that we are going to be in for a very um, kind of like unnerving experience with the storm because there's no wind right now to speak of maybe 10 knots and you can hear it howling through this bridge and other things anyway we're like bordering on incapacitated now i will say the mast and the rig has held really strong i i don't know if we're in that much danger or if it's just perceived danger but with the extra lines we hit some wakes and i watched the mast and there was no movement it seemed very solid so that's really good feels good feels good to be here and be be safe for a bit and then we're gonna have to head out and uh, make our way to um, st. Mary's st. Mary's uh, boatyard um, we spoke to John the rigger there and super nice guy he was texting me last night around um, 7 o'clock in the evening and uh, sounds very optimistic um, the pictures and my description of the damage I think this is, hopefully it's gonna be repairable. Um, perfect situation because he said, I don't climb mass anymore, but I've got a cherry picker. So he's gonna take the bucket truck all the way up and he'll be able to get a nice, easy, calm um, assessment of our entire rig, um, which is perfect because I don't think it'd be safe to have someone climb it right now. I, I don't know, maybe it is, I don't know, but I'm worried that it's not. 